someone says, you can go to Florida and get clean, what could possibly go wrong? I found a kid overdose. He's, I don't know, he's on the side of the railroad tracks. All these kids think they're coming down here as a person trying to get their life together. To some of the places they're going to, they're not a person at all. They're a policy number. Help us help these kids and not die today. Please, God, help us help these kids and not die today. Addicts are flocking to South Florida because it's ridden with treatment centers on every corner. They say Delray is the recovery capital of the world. So many people that came here from Jersey, Boston, Ohio. Delray Beach is like an amazing clash of two worlds. On one side, there's people in their Hawaiian shirts on vacation, having a time of their life. And then right behind them are people selling heroin and kids walking around looking for heroin. Back in 2005, prescription pills, they were easily found. The pain pill epidemic was so fucking big that the Fed stepped in and started shutting these clinics down. Prescription pills aren't as easy to get today, so people really started to use heroin. All of a sudden, heroin comes through here like never before, like boom, fucking dope everywhere. This shit is so powerful. It is fucking Satan itself. People don't know that addiction is actually a disease. Once that beast is unleashed, man, it's no longer a choice. It's an obsession. When Obamacare passed and required insurance companies to treat addiction as a disease, you could go to treatment as many times as it took you to get sober. That's where the money came in. So many people that came here from Jersey, Boston, Ohio, think they're coming down here as a person trying to get their life together. I need help. I know. To some of the places they're going to, they're not a person at all. They're a policy number. A lot of treatment center owners and sober living owners are predatory in nature. Kenny Chapman was an owner of a treatment facility called Reflections. He had girls tied to beds where they couldn't get out with a line of men out the door raping her repeatedly over and over again. This guy stayed in business for years. My passion's helping people that were once like myself, that had no resources, that had no options, that didn't have insurance, didn't have money. They're tired of being a slave to this game. Fentanyl does kill, but for some reason it doesn't kill me. I've lost way too many friends. It's never been this bad before. I'm not even gonna like sugarcoat it. You're gonna fucking die. Robberies, murders, overdoses, homelessness, prostitution. Shit that they won't even put on the news because they don't want to drop their property value. The people that I try to help daily, they're the forgotten people. We're fighting an uphill battle here. Hello? Hey, Nate, what's up, man? How you feeling today? Nah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's sit down and talk and see what we can do about getting everything, like, you know, get you get you in here, man, so we get you feeling better soon. All right, see you soon, brother. Nate is from the same city as me, Toledo, Ohio. He works in the industry. Nate says he's living in an old halfway house that's now a bando because the owner died. A bando is basically a shutdown house in general where a lot of people squat. Sounds like he's just been going hard, smoking crack, shooting dope, so. Nate probably doesn't have too much longer. A scholarship and treatment basically means that you don't have insurance, you don't have money. Looking at like 30,000 for treatment for these kids is not easy to come by. I need to know what's going on. Is he serious about this shit? Does he really want help? He's got a complete opportunity to get his shit together. Is he ready to go to this treatment center in my waist in somebody else's bed that could be like literally dying for it? 
What's up, bro? What's up, bro? It's good to finally meet you, man. Yes. How you feeling? Uh, I felt better. You know what I mean? Did you get straight today, at least? Or? Nah. The, I haven't gotten hot or anything yet today. I slept in too late. I didn't want to make sure I didn't miss this. I see a lot of myself in Nate, man. It's weird that we're from, like, the same city. We both work in the treatment field. We both know what it's like to be in and out of the program. That shame, that guilt. Dude, the one time was, dude, I was strung out. Dude, and I'm just driving, and I get pulled over by this cop. The cop asked me for my name and everything, and I don't have a license. And he's like, I think you're the one you helped my son. Dude, like, broke down. It was like, they gave my son back, like, blah, blah, blah. And, like, you put my family back together. Dude, like, ended up letting me go and stuff, which at the time I was like, yo, like, that's awesome. But, like, later I was like, damn, like, I can't even put myself back together right now, man. What's your son like? He's the man, dude. He's, like, a grown-up now. He's nine years old. Oh, shit, bro. Yeah. He, like, has his own thoughts, has his own words. Is your family still, like, supportive and everything? Yeah, my mom's real supportive. It's like my mom has just been texting me recently, like, the last, like, hour. She just wants to make sure that I'm OK, you know? Because she's just is always worried about me. Only child? You no, know, I have a brother, but we were adopted. My uh, birth mom was raped by uh, her boyfriend, and that's where I, I came from. And she gave me a pre adoption. I try not to think about it as much as I think it messed me up when I was younger. But I love my parents to death. They've done so much for me. They've always been so supportive, you know? You know how addiction, you, you know, hurt the ones that are closest to you. And I definitely haven't, you know, been the best. How many caps have you been doing today? Like six or seven, but it's more it's more the crack, dude, honestly. You tired and just done, man? Like it's like more of like a mental and emotional thing, you know what I mean? Not as much as like a physical, like, oh my body's tired or my arms hurt, or like I don't have any veins left, or like you know, all those different reasons why people will stop getting high, dude. It's like just emotionally, like physically like drained or emotionally, mentally like drained as fuck, dude. Like just done, dude. Like it's never been this bad before for some reason. I just want to have my family back. My mom, my son, my kid's mom, whole family, man. My thing is, man, I just like to see determination and willingness. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, my whole thing is, like, somebody's going to either get in one of these beds or somebody that really wants this bed's going to die trying to get it. You know what I mean? Because you know how hard it is, like, to get scholarships sometimes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the hardest things. In <laughs> there is out here to do, man, especially nowadays, dude. So what are your plans up until Wednesday or Thursday? We got, like, what, five days left? Like, I mean, obviously, I know what it's like to be sick. You know what I mean? Um, I know for me, like, going into treatment, like, I get that attitude, like, I'm going to fucking get it in because I know I'm going on this day. What's your plans with that? I don't know. Yeah, honestly, I'm just gonna try and stay alive until then. Okay, so this is the one that she knocked out. This oh, is the one that she was. Hit you that hard? Yeah, I was blue and correct. No. Mouth to mouth. Please make your message for five, six. This is the second day in a row I have not heard from her. I know something's wrong. Where the hell have you been? What are you doing? Where are you? Nothing. Everything sucks. I hate my sister. She locks the refrigerator. Me and Kelly had met at DAF in 2008 when I went to treatment. Kelly was like the peer leader and the president of the residential units. Kelly was awesome when she was sober. She had her hair done, had her nails done, made her money. She was a dental assistant, so she had a great job. And like, she was really doing well, but she couldn't do it. She just, she just couldn't do it. We 
when you get to that age and you start using, everything is such a shit show. Then I'm gonna treat a bitch that thinks I owed her all this money. She's knocked my tooth out. I'm missing what? three fucking teeth. Are you, you serious? When I smile, Allie looks so bad. Allie, I'm so goddamn skinny and disgusting, it's gross. I steal at Walla. That's a pretty good gig I got, boy. And, and my mother condones this, Allie. I mean, I, I think. Don't with you, man. They're good. So tell me about this. Okay, so you have the scholarship. Have I need something from you, though, Kel. Like, seriously, what? I need something from you. What do you need? I need you to actually stay this time. Oh my god, don't 100 stay. million, 10,000 percent. I have absolutely, I'm ready to go. Like, you, this is, this is not me like, okay, no. I just need you to stay. Good. Need you to stay. You want me to say this without me? I fucking left a $50,000 rehab? Yeah, you can say it, and then I'm putting it on the line for you one more fucking time because oh, okay. you're a hot mess. But I need yeah. you to really stay. Seriously, Kelly, please. Well, It'll be so much fun because you're like, still going to take me to Vegas. We're going to do all these fun things, right? What? Are you going to take me to Vegas one day? Yeah, I know. I promise 31st you I birthday. I got to get back to work and all that. Damn, I'm flying. I got to get back to work. It's okay. So I won't pay any pressure still at anymore. work? Yeah. When are you going home? Mm, why would you need? I need a few dollars. My mom won't help me. Won't help me. Not for drugs. I, I need some cigarettes. I'm coming down there. Let me let you. Let me. Like, literally, give me like a half hour, hour, and I will call you. All right, so I'll call you in like a half hour, 45 minutes. All right, I'm sure you've been right, right, talking that fine. Oh my Is there going to dipping sauce? Unappreciative motherfucker. <laughs> That's me, dude. <laughs> I'm just trying to think about what's going to be different this time and what, what do I need to do differently. And um, I'm trying to do a couple things, like hold myself accountable. Like I told Frankie, I have a problem with girls, which you know very well. I've been telling you that for years, though. Yeah. Like, obviously, you know how I, mildly how I feel about the situation, but like, when it comes down to it, dude, especially before treatment, you're gonna want to get wrecked, obviously. But like, in my opinion, the only thing you have to do to still have a chance is not die. Like, I've seen people come out of the gutter with from nothing and make it. That could be, that dude that's homeless under a bridge could be your fucking boss in like two years. So like, if you're not dead, you have a fighting chance, dude. You could literally turn it into anything. It's a butterfly effect, dude. You yes. never really know what, yeah, could, yeah. like, one decision could change everything. I'm Chris, an admissions coordinator here at Coastal Detox here in Stewart, Florida. What we do when the client first comes in is we take them into this intake room. So the patient comes in sits in this chair, and this is where it really sinks in. Uh, when they're sitting across from a behavioral health technician, this is minutes into them coming into detox. This chair has a lot of tears running down it. They really get emotional. It's kind of clicked for them like, hey, I got to give up my best friend, which is the drugs and alcohol. I'd say 95% of the people sitting in this chair are under the influence. Yeah, most of them are blitzed. When they know they're coming into detox, usually that's the, the last hurrah, they think. Uh, they're going to get as much drugs and alcohol as they can. That's a dangerous thing. Like, we don't want to put them in a room and have them overdose. So we'll come in here uh, and sit in this chair and get their vital signs from this machine to see if they can even be admitted into our community uh, to see sometimes they have to go to the hospital. When I get dope sick, I feel like I'm hot and I'm cold at the same time. Sometimes I throw up, I sweat like crazy. It's just like having the flu times a thousand. I was just seeing how much money I had for when my guy comes. I'm hoping that that'll get me too morning time it's also like that urge because you know that 
two things that'll make you feel better, either Suboxone or heroin, and that's it. It's a shitty feeling. It really is. That's why I hate this so much. Um, you can get to this, man. I hope so. Hey, getting high and everything, like, obviously, we love the feeling of it. I fucking hate this though, man. Like, I don't want to keep doing this. Like, I fucking hate everything about what I'm doing right now. I just feel like I, like I have to, like I'm physically like addicted to this right now. And you don't want to get high so bad, but your car is like an auto drive to the dope, man. Where it's like the only thing that you think about. And then it gets rough, and you start losing everything. You start losing family. You start losing friends, you know? This is, this is a God-given opportunity. And I'm not supposed to have this, man. And for whatever reason, I got it. I need to take advantage of it because I can't keep living like this anymore. This can't define who I am. This, this isn't me. Because I have more potential than that. And I know what I do. Right now, I'm looking for Nate, man. He's supposed to call me every day. I haven't heard from him uh, in a whole day. This shit's scary because I was at our office yesterday and somebody jumped in front of a train. My first thought was it wasn't Nate. Right now, I'm looking for Nate, man. He's supposed to call me every day. I haven't heard from him uh, in a whole day. Uh, yesterday, I didn't hear from him at all. You know, for me, it's very imperative that people get a hold of me when they're supposed to, man. My concern right now is I was at our office yesterday and somebody jumped in front of a train. And because I met Nate in that area, my biggest concern that it was him, man, because people drop like fucking flies down here. If we're at that point where we're at Nate's at, man, we give up. You know what I mean? We give up on life. Fuck life. What's life? We're gonna die anyway, right? And I remember late, man, I'm just trying to stay alive these last few days till this bed opens. That's scary, man, because this disease, this addiction, it breaks us the fuck down, man. People just give up on life, man. They become hopeless from this shit. Sometimes people are like, yeah, let's go to rehab the next day. They're like, man, fuck you. You know what I mean? The same person, just a different mentality, man. It's like that Forrest Gump shit. You never know what you're gonna get. guy at the mall, he hollered at her, hey girl, and she was like, hey. They fell madly in love. Now they have two kids that are taken away from them by the state, and that's Kurt and Kelly. I got Kelly cigarettes, and I got her granola bars, because they're sweet, and I got her a variety pack, so she has to like one of these flavors. Hey, Ellie Cat. Hey, Cal. What are you doing? Your boots good. look big. It's the bra. It's called Victoria's <laughs> Secret $60. After losing all this weight, I gotta have something. <laughs> you look really good. Oh, thanks. You look really good. I haven't seen you in a while. I know. Look, look. I know. Let me see. What's the other a fucking one? dental assistant. And look at my fucking teeth. Okay, so this is the one that she knocked out. Okay. This oh, is the one that was. hit you that hard? It, it, when your tooth decays, it becomes brittle. So when she hit, she hit me on this side. Well, I guess when draw went like that, and I bit, and it. Oh. Yeah. And then this one was decayed. I broke that one. And this is your canine. Look at yeah, me. your fucking, fucking mouth's fucking a hot bro. Mess. <laughs> My idea for a treatment center was a treatment center where a dentist's office is inside I of know, it. No, because so many people. I freaking well, mouth. You can tell us. Up. We've been talking about this for days. Why does drugs fuck your teeth up so badly? Well, it's not because you don't brush your teeth, because I brush my teeth. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why drugs take such a toll on me and make me look like such shit. <laughs> because it's fentanyl. That's really like whatever we want. That's the good stuff. When I get like, when I really get it like a real bag of heroin that's like really dark, I don't like that. 
I'd rather yeah. have the light stuff. Yeah, because that's fentanyl. It's fentanyl light. That's what I OD'd on. That's what I OD'd on. I told you that. I OD'd I had to go to St. Mary's. No. I didn't tell you that. I OD'd and Kurt had to no. do mouth to mouth. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He looked over. I was blue. He did mouth to mouth. You know, he knows of the trick where I told him, like, when somebody's ODing, you put ice on their vagina or their balls and it shocks mm -hmm. them. He did that. He did everything and nothing was coming about. So he called 911 and they came and, yup. He oh ended up going God. to jail because he was like, you're not saving my baby mama. And they came to me and I remember waking up in the ambulance. By that time, I was like, fine. I'm right. Like, oh, let me sign myself out. And here yeah. I am walking down freaking Dixie in my freaking gown, ready to go get something. Oh my God. You look, look good. You look healthy. Thanks, Cal. That's what it is when you're clean and sober, right? Yeah. I'll get together. Yeah, you will. Yeah. So when will you know the name of the place? I'm excited. Uh, I want to look it Probably by up. like Monday. It, it'll probably be the Dream Center for Recovery. What, as I'm yeah. thinking, you'll go to Daylight Detox, which is where I work. Okay. It's in Palm Beach Gardens, like next week. Okay. Whenever, like I said. Okay. Yeah. You're able to stay at your sister's house until then? Yeah, I'm still staying at hers, but whatever. Worst case scenario, my mom let me stay there. I already told my mom that I'm going. The I feel like, Kelly, you're going to like do a decent job this time because you don't really have to go for anything. You're going just because you want to go. I'm going to For the first go. time ever. I absolutely want to go. All right, I love Sorry. you. I love you too. All right, so listen, oh, so, we'll call, so um. I'll call, you, I'll call you in like a couple of days. Oh, keep in contact with me. All right, I love you. All right, I love Thank you too, Kel. All right. All right, bye. I'll never give up on Kelly. I'll never give up on Kelly. Unless Kelly gives up on Kelly. Yeah, he ain't answering the phone or nothing, so. I mean, I get it from being an addict and like living that way, but fuck, man. You got an opportunity for like free private treatment. You know what I mean? It's scholarship. It's the only thing you gotta do is show up and make a fucking phone call. I wanna look through this field and this area around here, man. A lot of people come over here, buy drugs and shit, where we're at. I actually, um, hold on, let me check my. Funny, I was just talking about him. He pops up on my screen. It says, what's up, Frankie? How you doing, man? Can you help me? So I just wrote him back. I'm doing good, brother. What's going on? What do you need help with? I'm just glad he contacted me, man. I don't know what he could be asking for right now. He probably wants money to go get high. And I, I just morally can't do that. Um, I just need something to eat, man. I'm dying over here. I'm so close to going. I don't want to do this anymore. I just want whenever I'm going to come here soon. All right, man. I know what it's like to be someone that's known for helping people that can't keep a needle out of their own fucking arm, being judged, being scrutinized, you know? I know what it's like to be out here like broke as fuck, hungry as fuck, and it comes down to a meal or a shot of dope. Like, as an addict, I'm never gonna pick that meal, man. Fuck a meal. I'm trying to feed my habit, not my stomach. I got arrested right there when I did my ear here. Shit. Like, literally, like, in between these two parking lots. I don't give addicts money. Maybe every now and then I see somebody on the side of the highway with a sign. I got a soft spot for that because that's how I used to make my money when I was homeless. So maybe I'll give them a dollar. If I see somebody hungry or they're, they're trying to tell me I need $5 for a meal, I'll either be like, jump in the car, we'll get a meal, or I'll bring them a meal back, you know what I mean? I'm great, thanks. Can I get the America's Burger combo? But I'm not gonna put money in their hands. If I read about that person dying at the end of the day, I feel responsible. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Chilling, man. How you feeling? I'm all right. Here you go, bro. Picked you up some uh, burgers, some fries. Thank you so much. No problem, bro. So I wasn't really able to get a hold of you too much yesterday. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to kind of, you know, make sure you're all right, you're still alive out here. Yeah. What's going on, man? What's been going on the last couple of days? Yesterday was just a bad day. Like, yeah, what happened? 
had a bad seizure yesterday. I'm still working with this kid, Nate, right now. I'm worried about him. He's already, like, fall, I mean, like, literally, like, falling apart. I don't want to be on camera right now. I had a bad seizure yesterday. Had a seizure? Yeah. Oh, shit. You always have seizures or just, like, mm, withdrawal just, and shit? Just, like, withdrawals and shit. Yeah, man, even if it's not physical, just, you know, shoot me a text, even if it ain't, like, a physical call. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just so I know. I'm sorry, like, man. It's all good, bro. Just... I was at my office going through the work with the sponsee, right? And when we left, there's cops all blocking this area off right here, right? I look over to the left and I seen a body laying there. And like, I'm not gonna lie, bro, cause I didn't hear from you and shit. Yeah. My first thought that it was you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like literally like laying like right here, bro. We don't gotta come to that bottom, man. Got a couple days left, man. Just keep it in check, bro. You know what I mean? Mm hmm Do you have any idea what day it would be? I'm thinking Thursday right now. OK. It's Thursday. Can't wait, man. I'm so excited. You OK? Emotionally OK and everything, man? Kind of at, Kind of at your hand? Yeah, I'm hanging in there. Just trying to make it till Thursday, you know? Maybe sooner. I'm just waiting on confirmation calls and stuff like that. <sighs> this is what it comes to for us, bro. Fucking needle in the arm or Narcan won't work. Fucking suicide. Jail if we're lucky. I can't say that, like, if I didn't have this opportunity, I might not be in that same position as him. So I feel like this is a blessing. But you got this opportunity. The train's coming, bro. This recovery train's coming, man. I know. Yeah, jump on that bitch, bro. I'm going to jump on it with you, man. You know what I mean? This is recovery, dude. We do this shit together, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I never got to be alone again, family. Thank you so much, man. I know. Just gotta make it till Thursday, man. Just keep that fucking demon out of your head, but don't go overboard, bro. Don't be like, fuck, I gotta get it in, man. Hey, mom. Hey, dude, what's up? Not much, just, you know, was just calling real quick to just tell you I loved you and that, you know, I'm sorry. That we've been, that this road's been so rough. Thank you for like being there for me through all this, you know, because you kind of put everybody's weight on your shoulders. And I know that's got to be a lot sometimes. Not easy. That's for sure. The first time I learned I was adopted, first time I was able to realize. Me and my parents had different skin colors, you know? And I just knew that something was off with that. Hey, did the doctor say, is that going to be like a permanent scar on your nose? No, I'm going to start putting like cocoa butter and stuff like that on it, and it should go away. I feel like I've let her down because she went without to make sure that me and my brother were OK. She sent us to Catholic school, which she had to pay our pocket for, which she probably didn't have the money to do at the time. I'll, I'll talk to you soon, but like I said, I, I couldn't ask for anything more. You've done everything and, and more that you could do for me. Well, I'm just glad you're still with us, because that's what I worry about. Yeah. I love you, man. I love you too, honey. Bye. Bye-bye, sweetie. I need to take care of myself. I feel like I'm going to throw up. It's just something I have to do because I get sick. You know, there's nothing I can do about it right now until I can get medically detoxed and get through my treatment and then take it from there. This is fun. Ah. 
many people do this for a living? Please leave your message for... Hey, Cal, Sally, give me a call back as soon as you get this, okay? I love you, I hope you're okay, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. What's up, you think she dipped out? She'll call me back, she's excited to go. Thing that sucks, like, with friends, and, like, especially with Kelly, I can see, like, how y'all are so close. Like, there's those expectations. Yeah. Just try not to hold any. Because you know how that goes, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, people never meet expectations. I'm still working with, I'm still working with this kid, Nate, right now. I'm worried about him, you know what I mean? Like, he's supposed to be going in by, like, Thursday, right? What's kind of scary is, like, today they told me, you know, there's a possibility it might be Friday and not Thursday. Yeah, sometimes that's like their only glimmer of hope is that, oh, I'm going to treatment. And they think like as soon as there's anything that happens differently, they like freak mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. He's already like, fall. I mean like literally like falling apart. Man, I'm worried about Nate making it, man. Like my anxiety level with Nate's like a 10 right now. I can't do it. It's sad, man. Like, today, he's, like, freaking the fuck out. And it's like, man, this kid's gonna die out here. What's up, Frankie? I was walking by your office, man. I was seeing, uh, just checking in and seeing uh, if it, we had heard any good news about the treatment or. Mm. All right, so it's Friday now. Like shit, man. I just want to get. I just want to go. I just want to get in there. Yeah. All right. What did, what did Frankie say? No, it's Friday morning at the latest, but they told me Thursday morning at the latest. And they told me Wednesday morning at the latest. I don't know. I don't know if I can make it through another night. Yo, my homegirl that I'm like kind of trying to whatever. <laughs> you really tattoo. need to figure your fucking at the tattoo Shit. shop. She's You're listening. You're a dog, to... yo. I am not, dude. You are so a dog. You need to figure out your fucking vagina. Whoever you're smashing, pick one. I'm just doing Frankie right now. Doing doggy style. Yeah, Frankie. I'm just getting my Snoop on. Oh my God. Like everything good in my life happened with, I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm worried about Nate making it, man. Like, what's going on? I don't you even know, know. You know how treatment centers are. He's supposed to go today, but it, it's looking like he's gonna go tomorrow. So he's like freaking out. You know what I mean? And it's like, man, this kid's gonna die out here. It's the one thing I hate about doing this shit, man. Is like, I know I don't want to be told tomorrow. You know what I mean? When I'm shooting dope, I don't want to be told fucking you get a bag tomorrow. But it's also bullshit on the treatment center's fault. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't understand what happened there. Like, they said that they could do it, and then they can't do it? I think they might be full. Oh, God. And since I told him that, he hasn't answered the phone. So he's pissed. Yeah, I think he's just really pissed or really high. 
which I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping he's actually going down what he's using. Right. He's not. There's no way. Cap's Everyone gets get as high as they can before they fucking go to rehab. Well, those you know last I mean? hours are so crucial, man. Like, I've lost people on their way to treatment. Me like, too. On the way to the airport, died in the car and overdosed. Yep. My anxiety level with Nate's like a 10 right now just because I know how hard he's running. I can't do it. It's sad, man. What's up, bro? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. How you feeling? Oh, terrible, but ready to go, man. Be greater later, right? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I'm glad they figured it out to get you in today, man. I know, it's awesome. Dude. That was my biggest fear, was that something was gonna happen with this weight and shit. You know how it is at treatment centers. Yeah. You got to hear all the way back from the owner and shit. Yeah. Did you get to talk to your kid at all before going in? No. You want to try to call her again? Yeah. Before you go in? That'll find some sort of one person. What do you need, your charger? Yeah, I'm on one person. I, got, I think I got one in the trunk. Wow, it's FaceTime my drug dealer, wags. <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm getting dropped off right now, and I know you gave me many chances before. I want to do better this time. And I'm going to try and call you. If you don't pick up, I understand. All right. Tell, tell Kamari I love you. All right, bye. <laughs> She sent me a text. She said, I don't want to talk to you right now. If you really follow through with this and get some sober time under your belt, maybe we can revisit you being a father. It would be great for your son to have his father back, but I will not have a junkie in his life. Damn. I hate being called a junkie when I'm a junkie. But then say, do I really deserve any, any better though, you know? I get to hear me so I can be good for other people, dude. I think Nate will probably get out and get a regular job for a while and come back to work in the field. For people like us, it, it becomes natural. I've tried to stop working in the field and I always get pulled back into it because that's where my passion's at. I feel he's the same type of dude, man. He wants to help people. If I get my shit back together, then like I'll be able to be a dad. I'll be able to do all that. Whatever happens out here is what's supposed to happen and when I get out, We'll see what the world has waiting for me. Please leave your message for five, six, 
one. Phone's off. This is the second day in a row I have not heard from her. You know, I know something's wrong. Riviera Beach Police Department. If Kelly's sitting there and they haven't booked her yet, she wouldn't. Your party is not answering. We try your call later. The police department's not answering. We're busy. Kelly's been arrested for prostitution, stealing, theft, having crack pipes on her, having needles on her, things like that. It's exhausting dealing with somebody like that. You know, the late night phone calls, Allie, I'm stranded, I don't know what to do, I have no money, I need to get out of here, I keep sucking dick, and every time I suck the dick, he steals the money, mother I can't just come and save you every time you call me, dude. Like, I'm fucking, I'm tired, man. This is what drives a lot of parents crazy, because when your son or daughter is in active addiction and you can't get a hold of them, you automatically think they're dead. This is just, uh, I mean, there's just a lot of drug dealers here. It's good for the hookers around here, all the truckers that stop by. Uh, if I find her alive, I'm gonna kill her. I've checked everywhere I could possibly check. Kel. Hang on. I'm so sick, Allie. Where are you? I'm in Miami. You're in Miami? Yeah, I mean, it was cool down here. And I should not do it. I've been sick for two fucking days, dude. I'm fucking not. I can't take this. Hi, bro. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Good, man. Feeling great. How you feel? Feeling awesome, you dude. You look awesome, bro. Yeah. You look a fuck ton better. Right, dude? <laughs> yeah. How you like it over here? I like it a lot, man. It's like good for what I need for right now. You yeah, know you can't I mean? have like energy drinks or nothing. Yeah, or nothing, here, huh? dude. Yeah. What else do they got? They got to have mad amenities. Like dude. a swimming pool and basketball court, little grills. Full court? Yeah. Damn, bro. Tennis court. I'm yeah. happy as fuck to see you, Yeah, man. this is me when I'm normal, dude. <laughs> like, not all strung out and shit. You talk to your baby's mom or anything while you was in there? What type? How'd it go? It went all right. You know, happy I was still alive. She but... let you talk to your son? No. I'm not, like, trying to force anything, you know? Because, you know, everything happens in due time. You know, there's always just that question of whether I'm going to make it till tomorrow when you're getting high. I feel like if you do drugs like I do long enough, it's always going to get to that point. It's just whether or not you stop before it does. For some reason, I'm still here. It's still kicking. And there's got to be something more behind that. So, no, I'm just happy to be alive, man. <laughs>